So what is the best value group set of 2023? Well, funny you should say that. I reckon it's this SRAM Rival AXS. It's cheaper, it offers more range, and it's better on gravel than Shimano 105 Di2. It's a beautiful bike, Jamie. Thank you very much. And while I would have agreed with you a few weeks back, I don't agree with you right now. I, no, you're, you're wrong. There, there is nothing else on the market that can offer the same price to performance ratio of SRAM Rival. I've got something to show you. Hold on a second. Look at this bad boy, Cervelo Aspero. It is a very nice Aspero. Take a closer look. Take a closer look. It's got SRAM Rival on it. Oh, hang on a minute. No, it doesn't. It looks like SRAM Rival. SRAM Apex Access, a brand new entry level, fourth tier group set from SRAM. Looks like it's going to appeal to the core audience of the off-road specific all-road market and we're going to be telling you all about it very shortly. It looks like a rebadged rival. SRAM is once again proving to be the most innovative cycling component company in the world. And did you know that they did pioneer the grip shift and one by drive train concept? Having recently overhauled its force line of group sets, the American brand has turned its sights to the fourth tier apex range to bring access electronic shifting to the core entry level market. Now that does seem to be a clever play considering the current cost of living crisis. There can't be that many people thinking they'll treat themselves to a fresh new red AXS group set on a whim. Apex has always represented the entry level side of the spectrum for SRAM and it's this Apex moniker that accounts for a fair chunk of SRAM's business. So obviously this is a big deal to them. It's a massive deal for them Jamie. So definitely I've had some, a chance to, to put some miles on it ahead of the launch both on the pristine gravel roads of Galena, Illinois, and back here in the UK. They did look good. I'm pretty confident that, that the E01 series is going to be a major sort of player in the entry-level market and the way entry-level electronic group sets are perceived. That is big claims. The thing that surprised me the most about this launch, though, wasn't the price, how well it works, or in fact, the it actually looks quite good, doesn't it? but that the cables are still kicking. Aaron, can you tell us why in 2023, SRAM still thinks we want cables? Well, SRAM says that despite bringing electronic shifting to Apex, like on the bike we got pictured here, they haven't forgotten about the purists and the diehards who enjoy and crave the tactility and analog mechanical experience. So you can buy the access in two forms. You've got access electronic or classic mechanical. Obviously cables have worked well over the years and it's a big attraction for people main, based mainly on its price. You can read my first ride review on the cable actuated axis over on road off-road CC. <laughs> That's the one. Who do you work for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Everyone. You can read my full first ride review of the cable actuated axis over on off-road CC, our sister website. We'll pop a link below in the description. You've been busy riding all sorts of groups there, haven't you? Everything. Anyway, so come on then, Aaron. You've spent a fair bit of time riding it. What is your three word review? Three words? Yeah. Premium, not precious. And I mean that with all respect. Apex Access was never designed to sit at the top rungs of SRAM's product offering, but rather operate as a gateway to SRAM Access ecosystem. As first time riders, Apex allows the user to progress through the range, grow with the range. And the focus here is very much hinges around customer retention. SRAM themselves say that Apex is well suited to new rider in terms of features and price points, and they want them to become lifetime cyclists and enthusiasts. It has to be said that it really does look very similar to Rival, doesn't it? And that's no bad thing. In fact, the only real difference I can see is this rear derailleur cage and the paint job. Uh, and is the chain different? It's hard to tell as mine's getting on a bit. Yeah, well, this new NX level flat top chain doesn't have the nickel chrome coating of, of Rival, but it has a polished finish. According to SRAM, this doesn't do much to affect the durability, but we'll have to put that to the test just to see how it gets on, especially in those iconic, traditional and muddy British winters. Absolutely. I'm guessing you haven't done that many miles, well, enough miles to find out yet. Not quite. I've only had a few weeks on it, just under 200 Ks in the US, but it was very dry and dusty. So yeah. it's going to be enjoyable and quite interesting putting that to the test, the whole, the whole drivetrain rig. Really. I'd rather you than me. <laughs> I'm also so glad that SRAM decided to go with this low profile slimline hood shape like on the Rival and new Force group sets. I find it really comfortable and I can't be the only one as Vingegaard also was spotted using a Force style lever at the Dauphiné. Anyway, you can check out the rest of his intriguing gearing choices up there. Jamie, it certainly is a comfortable ergonomic interface and SRAM says that this will also benefit riders with smaller hands. I don't think we fit in that category, but 
There's also a few minor visual disparities that you might have missed. For example, Apex uses a stamped brake lever as opposed to the forged unit found on force, which is purely cosmetic and it does nothing to affect the usability whatsoever. It looks pretty similar to me. Okay, one thing that I do particularly like about SRAM, other than I don't have to route wires through the frame, is that it's all intercompatible. So I can swap batteries between my mountain bike and my road bike or between front mech and rear mech. Is that still the case here? Yes, absolutely. So all the SRAM road range is compatible with one another. So if you want to upgrade a mech or the cranks, for example, at a later date, then that won't be an issue at all. Then you've got the fact that the new Apex range can be used in two configurations, either Eagle or Explorer. Uh, okay, you are gonna have to explain that to me though. What is Eagle? That's mountain bikes, right? It is, it is mountain bikes. Well, anyone who wants easy gears really, mm. and whether you go from Eagle to Explorer, it will come down to what type of riding you most prefer. While our time was spent exclusively testing Apex Access Explorer based purely on the topography of our test routes, Apex Axis will suit those who prefer to ride more technical terrain, mountain bike-like terrain, uh, steep, single track, descents, pretty much that. You need that bailout gear, that's what the Eagle is for. So basically, Eagle allows me to fit a really big cassette. In a nutshell, yes, it's that bailout gear option that so many riders crave, and it's a great addition. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what I do know is that both of these configurations share the same Apex One wide crank set and can be used with either the drop bar shifters like we've got or flat bar brake levers and shifters for mountain bikes. The crank arms, which you can get in sizes from 165mm to 175mm, are aluminium and use the dub spindle and direct mount X sync chain rings that we've seen on loads of other SRAM group sets over the past few years. Yes, and that's great for a wider chain line, which of course plays nicely with wider tyres. The chain rings are available in sizes ranging from 38 to 42, so they go up in two teeth increments and feature the company's widely employed direct mount eight bolt interface. A 40 tooth steel chain ring is standard issue on all OEM builds and differs to rival by way of the finish, the color matching and the laser etching. You weren't lying when you said about these tiny gears, were you? That X1 Eagle AXS rear mech will take a 50 and 52 tooth cassette. That's mental. Yep. And like its MTB counterparts, X1 Eagle gets the overload clutch feature and the cage lock functionality. The derailleur itself is constructed to GX level. Um, so the material, the pulley wheels, and the bearing assembly is very much like GX. The standard 1150 tooth chain ring is built to NX level. So it might not be the lightest unit around, but it is pretty robust and it should go the distance. It's also worth mentioning that both the Eagle and the Explorer cassettes will fit a traditional 11 speed HD style Ooh. driver body for broad integration. So you won't need to go out and get that XDR free hub. That is a nice touch. As more of a roadie type graveler is the Explorer rather than the Eagle version that interests me more. And those cassettes also use an 11 speed driver body whilst coming in sizes 11 to 44 tooth, 10 to 44 tooth, or 10 to 36 tooth. The derailleur doesn't feature cage lock, but does employ a spring loaded clutch for secure management over all terrain and surfaces, just like on the rival rear mech, which I have to say isn't far off the hydraulic damper in the red and force mechs. So, so far, this is really looking rather similar to my rival group set, isn't it? but one of my favorite features that I assume isn't included on the new Apex is the power meter. Wrong, you can have one of them, Jamie. The same one, in fact, as the Quark Dub power spindle-based unit. It will cost around $250 as an upgrade, and it weighs as much as a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> Does it? 40 grams. I, I always ride with one of them. <laughs> anyway, power meters really are for the masses now, aren't they? And I've got some proper expensive power meters, and to be honest, this one is a tiny bit less accurate, but it hasn't skipped a beat. I'm a big fan. So Jamie, there's a rumor going around that I'm a weight weenie. And while I won't dispute that fact, there is something we need to address and it's the weight of this entire group set. Yeah, I'm gonna guess it's about 200 grams heavier than Rival. Pretty close. The Rival group set on your bike weighs in at about 2,776 grams. Apex Explorer tips the scales at 2,890 grams, so it's about 114 grams heavier. That's not a lot in that, is there? That's about half a, well, half a U or a medium-sized tomato. Not that I go riding with either very often. Jamie, that tomato is going to make a right mess in your pocket. <laughs> anyway, back to Eagle. The Eagle version is about 300 grams heavier, 
and that's about 3,181 grams. That's about three medium tomatoes. It's a good job I've got three pockets on the jersey. You pipe down about the tomatoes. <laughs> so from a pricing perspective, SRAM Apex Access will appeal to the smart spender, which is a very clever move considering the current cost of living crisis. In terms of pricing and retail availability, a SRAM Apex Access Explorer group set will set you back about £1,262 and SRAM Access Eagle comes in at about £40 more, so £1,303. You can get your hands on both group sets right now, but the mechanical version you'll have to wait for until around August. I won't be waiting. I'm, I'm getting the electronic one. I don't, <laughs> mechanical shifting, that's last decade for me. But I know you mountain bike lot, you love it, don't you? Ah, I love a bit of everything, Jeremy. You should know that. Okay, so it looks the same as Rival. It has all the same functionality of Rival. It weighs only a tiny bit more than Rival as it rides. Don't tell me, like, like Rival. Well, yes, it does. <laughs> as far as first impressions go, Jamie, SRAM Apex Access group set is simply superb to such an extent that it's almost imperceptible to tell between the two based purely on the ride experience and what's happening on the controls. The shifting is as precise as rival. The brake levers and reach adjustability and overall ergonomics are geared towards comfort. It feels superb. The new textured hood interface feels great and grippy. It provides confidence when riding out of the drops. There's no slipping. It's also much easier to brake from the hoods, which allows riders to mix up their hand positions. This is something that has become an issue for riders who like to get in sort of big, big days out, um, being able to move your hands around and just getting into some of those tricky sections when you can't move your hands into the drops, being able to have that power and that modulation on tap, superb introduction. Yeah, you were saying earlier that the brakes were powerful and stopped you going straight on at that corner that I didn't tell you about, weren't you? Yeah. The confidence this instills in the rider means descents can be taken faster. And while the Apex system is bereft of SRAM's bleeding edge technology, the brakes are a brand new flat mount version of the level caliper design. The only difference being the bleeding process, which follows the same method as the 11 speed HRD controls. Going this route was purely a cost saving measure and I don't personally mind it. Now, one thing that does interest me is those 11 tooth cassettes, because obviously if you've only got a 40 tooth ring on the front, then are you not gonna spin out everywhere? Look, that's a good question, Jamie, because that is going to obviously cause a bit of uh, um, fire with, with, uh, with the gravel brigade. I can tell you that on my launch route and the test, the testing that I did, I didn't feel like I ran out of gearing at all with the 11. Perhaps a little bit on some of the undulating areas, maybe some of the fast downhills I was spinning out, but then there is the option to upgrade to a 1044 or a 1036. Yeah, you and just then got to get the XDR driver. Yeah, up there. yeah. And I mean, there is obviously also the option of an aftermarket chain ring probably 40, mm. 44 to 46. I'm going to put a direct mount one on it. Yep. And they look good as well. Very, very pretty. Mm. So really, based on our initial impressions, Apex AXS really does have what it takes to be the entry level group set, both in terms of performance and price. Indeed, Jamie. It's sure to rake in a slew of new customers, as well as set the requirements of existing ones. It's that good. And while SRAM hasn't pigeonholed Apex Access as a discipline specific group set. It's a gravel group it's set. It's rather left it open to interpretation, meaning we'll find favor with those of the gravel persuasion, all road riders, bike packers, and even mountain bikers moving into the gravel space for the first time. The fact that it can cater for the broader off road demographic is a unique selling point and something I think will bring many new customers to the brand. Well, what do you think of the new Apex? Are you glad to see that it's gone electronic, or are you glad that there's still a mechanical shifting option? Let us know in the comments section below. Like and subscribe if you found this content interesting and we'll see you next time. Right, race ya. <laughs> With our pedals, nice. Balance bike for me. Apex has always represented the entry level side of the spectrum for SRAM. And it's this Apex moniker that counts for a fair trunk of SRAM's business. So obviously this is a pretty big build. Uh, <laughs> pretty pretty big bill.